Okay then, you beautiful people, the all-important setup. Basically with shallow fishing, uh, it's very rare I'd go straight into shallow fishing. What I'd do first, certainly on this short line like we're doing today, as I say, we're having a non-selective swim and a selective swim. So on the non-selective one, that's when I'm going to be feeding out of my hands. So this short, shallow one, I'm going to be feeding casters out of my hands. Now, normally I'd start off on the bottom and then as soon as I start getting liners, foul up fish, that's when I'll come up in the water. There's not a faster way of catching fish than shallow, hence why we're doing it today. So. My first shallow setup, obviously on this short line. I'm fishing a long kit on this, and that's important because I've only got a soft elastic through. It's our three to sixes hollow. Um, if I was fishing the the short shallow kits, there's not enough giving, like even the softer elastics on that line, because hide and skimmers and hybrids and things like that. They're a bit sort of wobbly. They don't sort of like pull back as hard and they sort of come to the top. So if your elastic's too high, it's going to be bumping fish. So tip number one: make sure you're using a nice, lovely, soft elastic. Now coming to the rig itself, so we started off on the bottom, it's probably like three and a half, four foot on that shelf there at six metres. Now the next depth I'd come to when you start getting liners um, is probably around, what's that, sort of two foot, something like that. And then again, if I'm still getting liners from that, that's when I'm going to shallow up. Let me talk you through the rig. So main line, we've got 0.15 power optex on. I don't wear any sort of like lighter or heavier than that. 0.15 is bang on for like this style of fishing when you're targeting silvers. Um, if you go to 18, I don't think it'd make a difference to be honest with you, 18, but I tend to stick to 15. Um, coming down to the hook length, it's only a four inch hook length, and that's very important. A lot of anglers fish too long a hook length when they're fishing shallow. Uh, the reason you want a short hook length is so it's nice and stiff as it's falling through the water. I'll talk you through how I uh, lay the rig in later on. Uh, but that's why we use a nice short hook length. Now I've got on that quite a big hook. I love fishing maggots over casters, you know, banded casters work really well, banded maggots obviously, but I love fishing a slightly bigger hook uh, and putting a maggot on it. Now, the way I hook the maggot, I'll get, I'll get Rich coming closer later on so you can see exactly how I hook it. Now I hook it through the side. If you watch how maggots casters fall, they always fall flat. They never sort of nose dive. Um, like it is when you like hook the maggot normally, they don't always fall like that, so you've got to hook it through the side. So, four inch hook length, 0.12, 16 hook, uh, Gamagatsu, nice light one, Gamagatsu BB2260, and then we've got four number 11s spaced evenly up, up the line, so that when I slap the rig over and hold a tight line, it's going to come through nice and natural, so it's sort of falling on that angle. So, any bites that you get on the drop, it's a nice tight line, they tend to hook themselves. Coming onto the float, now, as a coach, I see, I see anglers all the time using, yeah, light floats, but dibbers. Dibbers are probably the worst floats in the world for this style of shallow fishing. When you're looking for, oosh, one top then. When you're looking to sort of like catch fish through the water and looking for bites to strike on. They won't always hook themselves, a lot of them do, certainly in the early stages of the session. Um, but towards the end, when they become a little bit finicky, you've got to be hitting the bites. And that's why I'm using a bristle float. This is a MAP S3 and it's a 4x8. It only takes four number 11s and it dots it lovely. I always put a bit of grease on my bristle just so it sits to like, what, five or six mil showing. But as that's falling through, it's some little dinks on the drop. You've got to be hitting them. If you don't hit them, they're your bites. They won't always, as I say, hook themselves. They won't always bury some little dinks through the water. Make sure you're hitting them. Now you'll see this bit. Now this is very important. Obviously, check fishery rules. Some fishers will state that you've got to have a minimum of sort of six inches between your pole tip and float. But the shorter you can have this bit here, this line, the better. As long as it's nice and sort of tight and stiff through there, again, holding that tight line as it falls through, the fish hook themselves. So we've got there, what, roughly sort of like just over two inches, two and a half inches or something. You know, sometimes I pull my float right up to that as well. A couple of inches either way can make all the difference, cheeky at fishing sometimes and it will make a big difference so if I was getting liners on that rig again all I'd do I'd just start shallowing up if I wasn't getting bites I'd just go a little bit deeper as I say it's the inches that do make all the big difference so that's that's one rig now that's my preferred way of fishing you know sort of like searching through the water however um fish like Ide and F1s can be a nightmare at times with lightning fast bites so we can change that rig Again, check fishery rules, but all I'm going to do to alter that rig is get a BB shot. Now, I know some people are going to cringe at this, but again, it's one of them for me. Um, I've always said, anyone I've coached, like up until last year, I've always said that I'd never do it, you know. But you fish to win, don't you? You know what I mean? So just by putting this BB shot just above this shot here, 
it, it just transforms your rig completely. Um, so it's basically like like a jigger basically. So in effect, I've got two rigs in one. Um, a lot of anglers will, will fish it with no float whatsoever and no shots on just a bit of line, which I've got set up. I'll show you that in a sec. But for me, it doesn't get any simpler than that. If you're missing lots of bites and it's allowed, overshotting's allowed, um, just lower that rig down. We'll go through it later on, but you're basically lowering that rig down until you get right down to the bottom, give it a few taps, bring it back up and lower it, and the fish just hook themselves because it's that it's that, that acts just like a bolt rig. So the fish comes into it, sucks the bait in, can't shake it off, and it's on. All you see is your elastic flying out. It really is an effective way of fishing, but it's not for you purists out there who like to fish rivers and canals. As I say, I, I, I never thought I'd do it, but I've been smashed up a few times on it now, and it, it's one of them, you've got to do it. So that's that's the float rig, that's the my rig of choice. Now, on to the rig what's doing a lot of damage on waters. I'm not gonna say its name, because it's not very PC. Basically, all it is, is a bit of line, and you'll see there, that BB shot again. So same main line, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, again, that four inch up length. And on this one, we've just got a little band on. You're getting on that, Rich. We've just got a little band on there where we can just put either a banded maggot on or a caster, and it's a smaller hook, an 18s hook. Um, if the fish are, are really having it, there's a lot of fish in your peg and you know they're all over the place when you're feeding, then this rig just proper proper takes venues apart. But you know, a lot, a lot of venues ban it and it's one of them, should it be allowed, shouldn't it? At the end of the day, it's just another another method of catching fish. I don't know why people ban it. It's, it's just one of them things. I'm not getting into that. Anyway, on to my pellet rig. Um, so obviously I'm feeding the pellets out long, so it's maggots and casters short, pellets out long, so we've got two completely separate swims on the go and on two sort of different areas, one at six metres and then your next one wants to be a minimum of sort of 30 metres, so you're not you're not splitting the fish, you want two separate shoals of fish, so short, hopefully they'll catch silvers, there's a lot of carp in here, though. they'll probably come waddling in and then out long it's going to be carp, F1, skimmers, things like that. So, we're fishing heavier on this, generally when you're fishing shallow, you can get away with fishing heavier. Obviously, when you're fishing on the bottom, the fish have got a chance to come in, inspect your rig. But when you're fishing shallow, you want them, you want the fish competing so that, you know, they see that bait going in and you want them in that frame of mind thinking, well, if I don't get this bait, the fish behind me is gonna get it, so I've gotta have it. That's how you want them, you want them competing. Now, both of these swims are gonna sort of like, take a bit of time, you've gotta prime them first. Certainly the main swim out, out long, match conditions i'd leave it alone for at least sort of an hour hour and a half you might see him swirling after 10 minutes just ignore him let him get right confident and then you can go in and snare him so you notice on this one i've got a bit of a longer line between pull up and float remember me saying on that other one where we're fishing for different species hide and stuff very fast with this one i want to keep the pole tip well away from certainly the wary carp if it's more f1s i'm catching again what i'll do is shorten that line right up so we've got there what roughly sort of 14 16 inches 0.18 again map power optics it's a slightly different float again it's 4bh but it's uh, my favorite float the sf2 it's a little bit more robust than the s3 that s3 is a little bit more sensitive for sort of like silverfish but this one is an out and out carp f1 bagging tool it's just my personal favorite floats and uh, if any of you can't get hold of them it's because they're all in my garage <laughs> so coming down the line again um, again we've got that same sort of four inch hook length 0.16 this time though very heavy well very heavy for us me and jay i mean jay don't fish any of you heavier than 08 you know what i mean uh hook wise as well that's a little bit bigger um i'd hook it's a, a gamma power carp this one size 16 and we've just got that little band on the top if you can get in on that rich zoom in on that hook you see how many times i've whipped up there now all that does but by me um sort of whipping up that hook a good sort of 20 22 times obviously depending on the thickness of your line it eliminates the need to put that bit of silicon on i don't like putting that silicon on um because some that that band will go all over the place and that that silicon can just mask uh, the bit from your the point of your hook obviously to the shank of your hook it just sort of like minimizes it so that's why I just whip up more times so that band will always stay there. And then you can see on that, I've whipped back down sort of three or four times and make sure that line's coming off the front of the hook so it's sort of like in turn. It's such an aggressive way of fishing. When the fish takes it, it's proper game on. When they have that, there's no getting away from it. They're coming into my net. So coming up the line again, we've got less shots on this one. We've got three because generally we'd be fishing shallower. Obviously, the deeper I'm going, I need 
more shots down the line so it's registering the bikes quicker. But we've just got three number 11s spaced evenly up the line and it's set a little bit shallower. We've probably got it at like 16, 18 inches, something like that. Again, things to watch for. If you're not getting bites, go a couple of inches deeper. If you're getting bites but missing them, just come a couple of inches shallower, simple as that. Uh, elastic choice. You'll see we're fishing with our F1 kits on this one to make it like super stiff because obviously the longer we go, we need to stiffen our pole up so we're straight into the bites. Um, we've got uh, the map six to nines on this one. Um, it's lovely stuff, it'll stretch and stretch. It'll probably go to the island even on these short kits. It's brilliant stuff. It's pretty much all I use for sort of carp and F1s, either the pink, the yellow or our white. The Dacron connectors, now these are very important. Um, obviously when we're, when we're slapping over and this, that and the other, that Dacron is just keeping that line away from your pole tip all the time. If you use sort of traditional connectors, they're not good because obviously the slapping, I think you've, you've got to do because it's, it's mimicking the bait going in. So it's all about the noise and the commotion with shallow fishing. So if you're using like just your normal plastic connectors, that line will eventually just wrap around your pole. So you strike into a fish, it's snapped because you've not got no give, no elastic. So make sure you are using Dacron connectors. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. So I think we should go through next um, how I sort of start the swims off, what I do to feed to get the fish there and then uh, eventually snarl them. Let's go and catch some. 